Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is your brother Maya Odinya, aka Tommy Kurta. I want to come to you from the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Devarim. I'm going to start at chapter 12, but verse 32, and then immediately go into chapter 13. Now, we'll be coming from the King James Version of the Bible. And why I'm adding verse 32 excuse me, is because in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew scriptures, verse 32 is verse 1 of chapter 13. So that is why I am including it in the reading. Hallelujah. What thing whosoever I command you, I observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams for Yahweh your power proveth you to know whether you love Yahweh your power with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after Yahweh your power and fear him and keep his commandments, obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And the prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from Yahweh your God or your power, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. To thrust you out of the way which Jehovah, thy power, commanded thee to walk in. Hallelujah. I wanted to make this video because um, in our current situation that um, we are going, um, we are going through issues. We are um, both unemployed at this moment. We receive no um, aid. From, from the state we receive no unemployment and I have a few of my um, Christian friends was like see this is because you have walked away from Jesus you have walked away from the one true living God you have forsaken the Son, and now you're going through all these trials and tribulations and you wouldn't be going through them if um, you were still a Christian um, I, I, I don't believe that's what it, what it is because, um, when I was a Christian for nearly 20 years, um, paying my tithes, offerings, being one of the biggest, um, contributors in my church, I have lost jobs. I have, um, lost many of things during my stay of being a Christian. So I seriously doubt, um, my not being a Christian any longer is, um, what it's all about. I firmly believe sometimes that our Creator can test those who are His. If you are confessing that you belong to the one true living God, He has the right to test you and I. Regardless what kind of way He chooses to do it, He can test us. And He's testing to see whether or not we are truly faithful unto Him. And when I say faithful unto Him, I mean faithful only to him and keeping the commandments that he gave our forefathers to keep. Because these righteous commandments are to be kept by all that are his throughout their generations. There is no expiration date on keeping these righteous commandments of our king. So regardless what we are going through, we do not feel tempted in any kind of way to go back to Christianity. Because I had a, a, a friend of mine, I have several friends of mine actually um, tell me, won't you uh, return back to Jesus? Won't you come back to the Lord? Won't you um, start praying you know, in Jesus' name? And won't you try the Lord again? Why would I do that? 
because we have to walk in our integrity. We have to be faithful unto God. And if I made the commitment to God, me and my wife, that we are going to be faithful unto him, call only upon his name, pray to no other couple, no other name with his name. Why am I going to break that vow I made unto him? Just because I'm going through a trial. Just because I'm going through a hard place in my life. That, that, that would not be showing commitment and steadfastness unto him. That would make us fair weather. Regardless how the wind, we move according to the situations we go through in life. If things get hard, we jump ship. And then we start new commitments. We start new vows. But it doesn't work that way when you belong to the one true and living God. When you say that your God is Jehovah, when you say that your God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are supposed to worship him and him alone and stay faithful to him. And staying faithful to him also includes walking according to his statute, laws, and commandments. We cannot establish our own standards of righteousness or just think, if I just believe in this, if I just operate by faith, I just mentally agree with things, that's all that matters. No, we as his people have to walk obedient to his word. We have to keep his commandments. We have to be faithful regardless in the good times and the bad. We have to be faithful unto him and let him direct our path. So even in the midst of what we may be going through, I will pass this test. My wife will pass this test. We will, we will stay faithful to Yah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We will not forsake his commandments. We will not, we will not forsake our faithfulness to him and couple another name beside his. We will pray directly to him. We will not insert another name that for somehow we think miraculous gets our prayers heard or make our prayers relevant. Because I was a Christian before. I prayed in the name of Jesus. And I had a lot of hit and misses. So I paid the tithes, I did the offerings, I sowed the seed and still lost jobs, still lost a lot of things in life while being a faithful Christian. So I already been there, done that. So now I'm walking according to the ancient path of our forefathers and the ancient ways of our forefathers did not include Jesus. Not trying to offend anyone, just being honest. You cannot see anywhere within the a Hebrew text, the Tanakh, a.k.a. Old Testament, you cannot see where any of our forefathers, any of the ancient ones, the holy ones, worship Jesus as God or were placing their faith in him to be forgiven of their sins or using him to connect with the creator or relying on his works to make them right with Yah. We do not see that. It's not there. That's not a part of the ancient way that our fathers walked in, in their righteousness. When I say in their righteousness, I am referring to when our forefathers walked faithful unto Yah and kept Yah's commandments and lived in a righteous manner. But see, we also see when our fathers how our fathers did Yah when they walked in unrighteousness. They was not faithful to Yah. They worshiped other gods. They called upon other gods. They established, um, they adopted the practices of the nations that surrounded them. And even the nations, when they went into captivity for rejecting Yah and keeping Yah and, and for failing to keep Yah's commandment, they started a, a, adopting their ways. So we can't do that. We got to be faithful to Yah. Regardless of what you are going through, my brothers and sisters, just understand that Yah is testing you. Yah has the right to test us. And he could test us no matter, I mean, any kind of way he wants to, regardless how uncomfortable it may be. We have to be faithful to Yah. We have to be faithful to the way that he designed, to the way that he inscribed for us to keep. We have to be faithful to the requirements that he gave us. We are to fear Yah and keep his commandments. 
this is the whole duty of man. So, this is all I want to say. Uh, we're going to be faithful to y'all. We're going to weather this storm. And we're going to keep our heads held high and walk in our integrity to this great king and walk according to his statutes, laws, and his commandments. So, my brothers and my sisters, I'm just telling you, stay encouraged. But those of you who change this, who have chosen this ancient way of life, it is not a religion. It is a lifestyle unto God. Let me say it this way. You don't, you, you don't have a religion with your, 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 your parents and your family. You have a lifestyle. You have a way of life that you function with your family. And that is the same way with this creator. He did not give us a religion. He gave us laws, statutes, and commandments to keep. And he said, if you love me, this is what you would do. You will obey me. You will honor me. You will seek my face. If Yah, if Yahweh tells us to seek his face or his face alone, how do you tell me? Like I said, I'm tying this back to this text what we just read. How do you tell me I need to call on Jesus? I need to seek Jesus' face when Yah has said plainly, seek my face. Call upon me. Look unto me and be saved. Signs and wonders are great. We, we see signs and wonders in the Hebrew scriptures, in the Old Testament. But if somebody is trying to lead you away from walking faithful to Yah and keeping Yah's commandments, I don't care what kind of signs and wonders they do. It is a test. So for all my brothers and sisters that have been trying to give encouraging words, I appreciate the encouraging words, but please do not try to get me to go back to that which I walked away from. Because it's only a test of Yah to see will I be faithful unto him. Yah and him alone. And that I will walk according to the law, statutes, and commandments that he gave my forefathers the key. So this is what this is what me and my wife chose. We chose to serve the one true and living God and him alone. We don't couple another name with his name. We don't pray to him. But think it has to be done in somebody else's name so that the prayer somehow will reach him or have more relevance. Because we do not see that when you look into the ancient text. The righteous people of God, the people of God could pray to their creator. Yahweh don't need no tag team partners. He is God all by himself. And it's him who me and my wife serve and serve alone. It is he who we worship. And we have made the decision to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. Because that's what he requires of us. Takes out all the guesswork on what we're supposed to do. Because he already laid it out in the scriptures. This is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to live. So in the midst of this trial, in the midst of the storms, in the midst of the testings, he said, I'm testing you to see, do you love me? And will you be faithful to my way? And this is a test that me and my wife will indeed pass. So, my brothers and my sisters, this is your brother, Maya El Binya, a.k.a. Tommy Kurt Todd. Shalom, love, and blessings, and stay encouraged. And do not forsake this great king. Do not forsake walking according to his Torah his teachings and his instructions. Hallelujah.